everyone. Welcome to Textiles and Tea with the Handweavers Guild of America. I'm Kathy Group. I'm the Advertising Manager, and I get to be your host today. We want to welcome everyone to this episode that is sponsored by Weave a Real Piece. This is a wonderful program that supports weaving throughout the, uh, the world. If you'd like to learn more about it, check out Weave a Real Piece, and I think you'll be impressed with the work that they do. We will take questions as always, the last 15 minutes. Please put your questions in the Q&A and not in the chat. We love your comments in the chat, but I can't really see them. So if you would put them in Q&A, I can get to those. Today, I am so excited because we have Omar Chavez Santiago. Omar, who learned how to start weaving at eight. He started helping his family and, and weaving when he was eight years old. I think he actually got on the loom and was an independent weaver at 14. He, uh, his family uses uh, natural dyes exclusively, and he likes to respect the history and the natural timing in each element. He's an industrial engineer by education. He learned to be detailed and careful in his processes. Each rug is carefully considered to convey harmony and freedom. Through the journey, through the joining of Warp and Weft, he searches for inspiration to create new possibilities and ways to do and see things. Omar has given presentations about his creative process across Mexico and the United States, and he recently award, won the Alice Brown Memorial Scholarship from Weave a Real Peace and has been featured in Selvage Magazine. He is in charge of the design and production development department at Fay Ilola Rugs and Textiles in Oaxaca, New Me in Mexico. Welcome. We are so excited to have you here, Omar. Hola. There he Hi. Is. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me. This is a, an honor. I'm very happy to be with you all. And I'm ready, ready to, uh, to talk about a little bit about uh, uh, the work I've been uh, doing recently. And uh, thank you so much again. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you talk about recent. We're going to talk about that rug behind you. That's pretty darn recent. <laughs> so, yeah. first of all, the important question is, what is your favorite tea? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a that's a nice nice question. You know, usually every morning before starting to to do some weaving, I really enjoy uh, to have. Uh, I'll say my my favorite tea will be. Let's see. I'll say it's hot chocolate with some uh, milk hot, uh, hot uh, Oaxaca and chocolate to be more specifically. <laughs> now is, is Oaxaca chocolate different than the chocolate we get in the United States? I love chocolate, so. Uh, yeah, you know, here, uh, usually instead of using like the regular sugar, uh, people will use uh, cinnamon in order to keep these, uh, these um, sweet flavor. Uh, huh. I really enjoy the one that my mom does because also she adds uh, pinole, which is this kind of uh, sugary element as well. Oh, okay. That goes on the list of things I want to try. That sounds good. We, we talked a little bit about your family, but can you talk some more about how you got started in fiber? Yeah, yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm a part, I'm a member of a fourth uh, generation family of weavers. Just like you mentioned in the beginning, I, I learned how to weave when I was eight years old. So I learned the craft from my parents, which are Fe and Lola. Uh, at the beginning, when I was a, a kid, I was an assistant of a weaver. So one of my tasks will be to wind the bobbins for my, my dad, for my mom, uh, to clean the patio, all these... Uh, uh, threads that were on the patio. I was in charge of picking them up, uh, winding them. And something I, I really remember uh, was to handle these tangled threads. Uh, <laughs> yeah, before going to play uh, outside with my cousins, uh, my dad will uh, give me one skein of yarn, very tangled. He was very, very smart. Uh, and he said, okay, when you're done with it, you are ready to go and play. I wasn't aware that that will take me two or three hours. So uh, <laughs> when I was done, or, already my cousins uh, left. So <laughs> it was a, a very nice uh, experience. 
we're all thinking we need someone like you to be in our studios. <laughs> you know, could you like do that for all the yarn that we have made into a huge mess? Well, um, okay. one thing that I think is interesting is that I don't know how many artists we've had on this show that have had it either a math or a science background. There's such a close relationship. And, and I mentioned that you got an engineering degree. So how do you think having that kind of a background uh, impacted on you as a weaver? Did you think it transferred over some or? Yeah, well, you know, I, I still, I still uh, seeking that balance, you know, uh, I took the decision of uh, studying an industrial engineering uh, because I always was very drawn into uh, manufacturing process and uh, to see how things were made. And um, this is something I, I every day I, I realize that I, I'm very able to, uh, to incorporate all this knowledge that I had in my career. For example, just to have like, a, to be more organized in terms of uh, have mm. my working space uh, clean to know where I'm living each tool. So when I'm gonna uh, start a new process, I know exactly where that tool is and I'll, I'm not wasting that time. For example, uh, in, uh, as a fa in, in my family business as well, how to have more a structure, how to be more organized. So uh, I'm enjoying the process uh, in terms of weaving there's a lot of uh, counting, counting threads. So uh, yeah, I, I just enjoy to, to develop different uh, ways how to, uh, how to make uh, or to be more aesthetic or to be more precise uh, when weaving uh, certain uh, shapes. Yeah, that's interesting. I would imagine that, um, what, what would I call it? Um, kind of like project management. I would think that would be really important in industrial engineering and that you could apply that to, because you guys have projects going on all the time. It's not like, oh, I think I'll make something today, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and you know, uh, something uh, I really uh, enjoy is that uh, as an industrial engineer, I'm doing like all the opposite way. You know, I'm not working with machines. I'm working with my own hands and working uh -huh. with people. So... Uh, just being able to be to have this experience by by myself to use my traditional tools to use uh, uh, all these different processes uh, empowers my philosophy that it is important to it is important to have uh, have a slow process how understand the material uh, I think that's something I'm uh, finding very meaningful. And I think it's very uh, important uh, to create things for uh, longevity with quality. And I think it's very valuable more in this world that it's changing very fast. So uh, I'm just feeling very, very happy to, to be able uh, to produce or to present something mm -hmm. without using, for example, uh, light, you know, like the electric power. So that to me, it's like something uh, that I feel very, very happy. One of the decisions uh, or one of the main reasons that uh, uh, draw me to, to stay in my hometown and not pursuing an industrial engineer career was that I always wanted to be part of something that it's not, uh, that it's not having uh, an, a dangerous impact on, on, on the environment. So oh, okay. with this, I'm, I'm very, very uh, happy. All the time I'm working uh, harder in order to, to, uh, to keep uh, doing research, to keep uh, learning more how, to, how I can be more sustainable, how I can be uh, more efficient. So yeah, I'm just enjoying the, the, the whole process of finding this balance. Well, we're gonna look at one of your, um, some of your work right now, this rug, just shows your bold use of color. It's just beautiful. So what do you think influences your color choices? Uh, well, uh, definitely will be uh, all my surrounding. You know, I'm, I'm surrounded by, by lots of tradition, by lots of color, uh, lots of very 
nice landscapes. And as well, I always like to give the importance to my materials. So in this specifically uh, rug, you can see some red, some pink, which is from cochineal, some orange will be, which will be this blending uh, of uh, marigold and cochineal. So always I find inspiration in, in the materials I'm able to, to use, cochineal, indigo, marigold. Uh, I like to do research as well. Uh, by the other hand, uh, I've been, uh, I'm a huge fan of Joseph Albers. So I've been uh, like reading uh, and are doing a lot of research on, on his work with the uh, color theory. So I think this blending of my own experiment and with uh, this uh, research uh, brings to life uh, these, uh, these color combinations. Joseph Albers, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he, he's so loved by weavers. It's just amazing. Just the use of his color. He and his wife, Annie, we see his, what this name comes up all the time. And mm -hmm. that's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, when you design, do you plan everything out? Like when you made this, did you know, oh, I'm going to put this color here and I'm going to put this color here? Or do you kind of wing it as you go? Uh, so uh, uh, I, I really enjoy this process that I call like very freehand. Uh, so usually a uh, lot of my pieces will start without having a color selection and without having a sketch. So that's how I will, I will be developing. Uh, however, uh, I've been realizing that making or having this process, it does it does take me longer in order to complete one single piece, you know? Oh. So uh, what I've been doing is I've been uh, sketching, I've been uh, having some uh, options in color and uh, you can uh, totally see the difference. Like for example, the rug you're showing, that's something I, I plan, that's something I draw, that's something that I choose the color. The one that it's in my bag, it's very organic. And this is uh, what I like the most. I just had my warp as a canvas, and then I start to fill it with color, with feelings of the day, my daily life, and uh, the color selection will be as I'm weaving. So usually like these kind of rugs will have uh, two, three different hues of the same color palette because uh, that's how I like to, to do it, you know, like, uh, that's what I have uh, available as well. And I've just enjoyed that process. Do you consistently have the same size rugs or do you uh, vary? Well, you know, something I, uh, something I always like uh, to think is how I can do something different, you know? Uh -huh. So I will start from this very simple thing, which will be the size uh, of the rug decision. So, I will start doing squares. I will start doing rectangles. By tradition, in my family, in my hometown, uh, weaving rectangle shape will be something uh, common. Uh, so I've been uh, trying to, to switch a little bit. So you don't have to do a set size. You don't have to say, oh, it's gotta be at least, you know, three yards long or, two yards wide or whatever. It's just the size of the loom, I guess, huh? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I will have uh, two looms uh, that I will be working. One mm -hmm. will be wider than the other one. So I can go uh, 10 feet uh, long, uh, wider. That's the widest I can, I can go, you know? So 10 all feet? the time. Yeah, 10 feet. Wow. Uh, 10 feet. Yeah, for example, the one that is behind me, this is uh, uh, five feet uh, wide. And the one wow. you're showing, that will be half of it, which is two and a half. That's big. <laughs> <laughs> All of us with our tiny little looms are like, wow. <laughs> well, your family is well known for using natural dyes. And we talked about that some at the introduction. Can you tell us why your family made this decision to change to natural dyes and some of the challenges that you encountered uh, making that change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'll say the main uh, or the main reason was 
uh, the main reason was because my parents uh, started to be aware of the of the impact that they were uh, doing or they were having by using uh, synthetic dyes. So this is a topic that it's uh, uh, very interesting. Um, when working with uh, chemical dyes or synthetic dyes uh, in order to fix color into the fiber, you need to uh, use uh, different uh, uh, toxic chemicals. So my parents were aware of this. Uh, my two siblings that are older than me, they were little and they uh, start to, to have these, uh, uh, my parents start to have this concern that they didn't want to have this smell all over the house because something important to say is that uh, uh, our workspace will be half workspace and then have a uh, living space, you mm. know? So uh, dying area will be in the center, uh, inside of the patio, in the middle of the patio. So uh, when you're having a chemical process, obviously the smells are very strong. And uh, that was one of the, of the main reasons that my parents didn't want to, uh, uh, to have any uh, health issue, first of all. And then uh, my parents realized that uh, uh, they wanted to, to do something more artistic, more uh, where they can just keep uh, experimenting and keep learning. And uh, they really enjoy to be in contact with, uh, with nature, with the material. So my parents, they've been a big inspiration to me uh, see, seeing their process since I, I was a kid, it's been very inspiring. Uh, and yeah, so I'll say the main reason was uh, uh, health, uh, a health impact. And it's been, it's been a, very, uh, a very hard journey, you know, uh, switching from a process to a, to a, a, a one that it's more uh, I want that it's slower. When working with natural dyes, you're not aspiring into a mass production. It's important mm -hmm. to mention that uh, we're making these, uh, we're, we're crafting rugs for making a, li a, li making a living. So uh, one of the easiest ways will be to have a mass production, to have faster process. Uh, and my dad, my parents took that decision of stopping probably that, that uh, way of making things mm -hmm. and doing it uh, slow. So since then, we've been enjoying, like I mentioned, it's been hard because at the beginning, it's uh, hard to, you know, to, to people will understand that the difference of having a slow process versus a uh, toxic process. So also, I always like to say I'm not only a weaver, I'm not only uh, creating new designs. I really like to raise awareness about uh, the importance of the importance and the impact of uh, natural dyes in a, uh, in a community of weavers and dyers. So uh, I'm just happy to, to, uh, to, to have people uh, at my studio uh, sharing them my process, uh, having these uh, talks, these discussions of uh, the use of natural dyes. Well, I heard you talk one time that the transition, uh, you didn't get a lot of support from um, the community doing that, that um, they weren't exactly excited to give you the, give your family the details or the knowledge on how to do that. Is that true? Uh, you know, so it's a, uh... Since we're a uh, part of a, of a community where um, mainly, well, I'll say more than half of the population will dedicate their lives to, to weave. So mm -hmm. uh, there will be uh, families, there will be people that probably they feel a little bit jealous about what they know. So probably sharing won't be like an option because 
uh, it seems like will be like competition. So uh, it's it's a we're in this transition where we're having uh, as a as a family project we're opening or um, or uh, or studio in order to uh, to have uh, people interested in learning so uh, we can spread uh, the word of uh, uh, the use of natural dyes. Uh, you know when you know something uh, a lot of people will probably will like to keep it a little bit more for, for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I get that. Well, I think it's it says a lot about your family that instead of being told, they went and found the information, they did the research, they figured it out. So, you know, kudos to your family. <laughs> when you started weaving, I, I heard you say that you started out like most of us with just straight lines and, and you mm -hmm. as you progressed, you learned more about you know, curves like the ones behind you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're so much harder. What little I know about tapestry weaving and rug weaving, it's harder to make those curves. So how do you decide? I mean, do you ever get to the point where you're like, it really should put a curve here, but it's just too much trouble. I'm going to do a straight line. <laughs> how do you decide where to put things? Is it strictly on what you want or? Yeah, you know, um, mm -hmm. yeah, just like you mentioned, to to do stripes will be like, the basic technique, uh, which is, uh, which will be, we can say, which will be faster to, to weave. However, yeah. I do get uh, bored very, uh, very <laughs> easy. So I've been trying to do plain rugs of only lines, but I, I do need a challenge, you know? So um, the philosophy of my work is that my, my, uh, my designs or my rugs the design of my rugs are the decision is moved by a challenge. I need to find a new challenge every time I'm weaving a new rug. So I think this uh, idea has given or has given me the power to all the time try uh, and to challenge my skills. You know, uh, the only way to enhance your weaving techniques will be by doing it and by practicing, by exploring. And uh, this is something I, I'm very drawn to, this continuous exploration of shapes, of texture. So uh, this is a very good example uh, that, you, uh, that uh, you are showing. I just like to make these, uh, these uh, rounded shapes. And something that I really enjoy about making a curve is that uh, I always say this, uh, weaving curves are very, jealous uh, because I cannot I cannot be doing something else. I need to pay my full attention to oh. curve because mm -hmm. if I'm uh, talking, if I'm thinking another thing, the curve won't be uh, rounded. It won't be uh, symmetrical. Uh, at the beginning, I was talking about counting threads and that's actually how I'm gonna weave uh, uh, a circle. So the idea will be, I have a thread that is my center. I will count the same amount of threads from the right side to the left side in order to have a symmetrical. And this is where I need to, uh, to be, uh, to, that my attention is to be uh, only in the, in the curves. So I have a, uh, I have a, uh, I, I really enjoy just to, 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 to weave curves and to try all these rounded shapes. Well, as we talk about your design and what you choose, what inspires you? What, what do you look to or who? I mean, you talked about Joseph Albers. What inspires you to choose your designs or your colors? Uh, yeah, I'm inspired uh, by the braveness of my parents every time that they took the decision of doing it differently. So they, they plant uh, a seed on me when I was a kid of creativity and not to be afraid of, uh, of to be free and to try something risky. So all the time, that's something I, I, I have in mind. I get inspired of 
I want to have a new proposal. I want that people will see uh, something different. I like, uh, like I was saying, I, wa I like to challenge my skills. I like mm -hmm. to challenge uh, my techniques. So this is something I really uh, find very, uh, uh, like I, I, I mentioned, like very meaningful. So my main inspiration will be this seeking of creating something uh, unique, of creating something uh, that cannot be repeated. And that's actually what I like to do. Every rock I weave, well, it's unique. It's different from, from uh, each other. So uh, yeah. Well, speaking of your parents, you, you, you talk so much about them, they, and it just sounds like they've been so supportive. And one of the things I heard you talk about is that they supported you going off to college. And I guess that was not the norm in your uh, community or your family. Mm -hmm. Can you sh and just talk some more about first that they said go, and then that they said do your own thing. Because I guess also a lot of other families in your area are like, nope, we weave this, and this is what we weave, and that's it. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I I talk a little of my, of my parents because they they uh, they had give me. I, I I always say I'm here to support my parents in in the, in their in the in the business in the in the family project. But uh, no, I've been realizing that they are, every day they, they, they support me and they teach me more about life, something that I, uh, so it's, uh, that's why I give the, the respect to them. So yeah, uh, traditionally it won't be very common that, uh, that parents will send their child to, to college. Uh, instead, they would like them to, to incorporate them to, to, the, to the work uh, and my parents, they were very open to send uh, me, my siblings, uh, to college, uh, to invest in education. Uh, like I was mentioning, you, uh, we make rugs to make a living. So I do remember my dad. Uh, I need to wake up at five in the morning in order to go to, to college. And my dad will be weaving. I will come back at 10, 11 and he will be, be weaving. Wow. So only that, uh, that memory always uh, touches me. So yeah, uh, I, I feel very, very lucky. Uh, and yeah, I'm very happy that I'm now able to and capable of give them uh, uh, back a little bit of uh, their, their big effort in my education. Yeah, my dad as well, he, he he, do, he barely speak English and I think he did want that uh, he wants to speak more uh, and he did it with uh, my siblings, me, when we were seven, eight years old, he will uh, take us to uh, English classes when we will have uh, people visiting uh, the workspace. I, rem I remember I was eight, nine years old and he will say, okay, go ahead, it's your time. Ex Explain what you're doing, talk about what oh. you're doing. And obviously I was very afraid because it's not my, uh, my first language, but uh, I've been realizing that, uh, yeah, the only way to, to, to do it and to be different is to, uh, to be always uh, uh, uncomfortable, you know, to seek that discomfort. Hmm. Well, I have to tell you as a parent, I love you hearing to hear you say that because I think all parents want to hear that from their kids. So we appreciate what you did. <laughs> so good for you. Um, the other thing I, I noticed that your family has is they have a gallery and yeah. that you sell your work there. Um, when when did they open the gallery? Yeah, so we're, um, yeah, so in 2009, the fall 2009, my parents took the decision to move into uh, into Oaxaca City, to Oaxaca downtown. And mm. the main reason was that uh, here, our workspace were not located in the main avenue. So it was uh, and still hard that people will find us. So instead, my parents took the decision of moving to the city to have, uh, to have this uh, direct contact with, uh, with customers, 
my dad, my mom, they like to talk about their feelings, uh, about uh, uh, or to discuss the the, the work with uh, with uh, all the people that it's interested with in textiles. So it was open in the 20, uh, 2009. So this October we're gonna be having uh, 14 years now uh, that uh, my parents opened the, the first uh, little shop in downtown in Oaxaca. Well, the other thing I'm curious about when you have siblings, when you have brothers and sisters and you're all in the family business, how do you find your place in the business? Because it sounds like you have one sibling that kind of specializes in this and another sibling specializes in this and your job is this. How did that all work for you? How did that work out? Uh, you know, I, it's, uh, I think we've been very open with my siblings. Uh, they older than me, I'm the youngest uh, member in my family. So, uh, so yeah, through a lot of communication, through a lot of uh, uh, confidence, uh, we just put in the table uh, all our feelings, all our goals, and we will be pursuing them. But then uh, each member adds value to, to the entire uh, family. So we've been very, I've been very lucky to be in a family where uh, there's a lot of respect for the work of each other. There's a lot of, uh, uh, it takes, uh, we take a lot of in count uh, what the other wants and uh, what can uh, be offered. So it's been, uh, I don't want to say easy, it's hard, but it's been uh, through a lot of communication all the time. Uh, it's hard to, uh, to have uh, or to run a business with your family, you know, because sometimes uh, if someone is doing something wrong, probably you cannot get mad or you cannot say, uh, 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 yeah, you cannot get mad with it because when you're done of that work meeting, you're probably gonna have dinner with, uh, with them, you know? So a uh, lot of patience and uh, that's another thing I, I enjoy. Now, are, are you and your father the only ones weaving? Are there other people weaving? Uh, well, uh, we're, uh, uh, Faye Lola is uh, my dad, my mom, myself, uh, my siblings, and we do have an extended family. Uh, my, do they weave? Uh, they weave okay uh, uh, and then you know we need we like to clean the rugs uh, at the endings when a rug comes out of the loom we have these tassels we we do this extra work in order to uh, to clean and have thin endings so we're all the time um, making bigger and bigger uh, our team with our extended family Wow. We could do a whole show of just your family. <laughs> Talk about everybody's work. Does everybody's work look different? Like if I walked into your shop, could I go, oh, this is Omar. I know his, and this must be, you know, his sister or his brother. Yeah. Does everybody have their yeah. own style? Yeah, we, uh, we do all have our own style. Yeah. Do you? Oh, that's great. Um, for many artists, when you talk about selling, for many artists, they have to find that balance between what sells and what you want to do because you think it looks great. How do you find that balance? Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a, a, a very uh, a great question. You know, because just like I was saying, I like to to do something that fills my heart. So it, this is very specifically, you know, because you can go in this direction of creating something commercial that you know that probably these, there are bigger chances that people will like that piece. Uh, in my case, uh, yeah, just taking the risk of, of uh, doing these uh, rare shapes and uh, with these color combinations. Uh, that's why I always like to say, I weave for, 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 for me, I weave for, uh, to uh, to feel uh, to be to be happy, you know. So when I'm weaving, I'm not thinking how much I'm gonna charge. Is this gonna be? Uh, I'm gonna sell these fast? No. 
all the time. I'm just focused in the weaving process. And at the end of the day, that's when I say, okay, so now comes the hard part. You know, I, 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 I had the, 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 the peaceful and joyful uh, part, but now comes the hard, which is waiting that someone will come and will like specifically what you did, you know? So uh, I, I, I'll say I did find the balance and my balance will be just to weave what I, what I like. Yeah. That makes sense. That, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. That's good. Well, what's next for you? Uh, well, you know, recently we, uh, I, I feel very happy. I recently, I just opened uh, a showroom, which is uh, a, a place that only displays uh, rugs. Uh, we're not having looms, we're not having uh, or dye pots there, but it's a, a space that displays rugs. And I wanted to uh, to show this new proposal of, of blending tradition, but then with a contemporary vision, because I do believe that in order to that uh, I do believe that in order to maintain a craft and a tradition needs mm -hmm. to to evolve. So this is my 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 way to uh, to do it. Uh, for the last years, I've been uh, wanted a lot to have uh, to have uh, yeah to have a residency. So that's something I'm I'm seeking. I would like to do it outside my country. I uh, every day I, I feel more, uh, ready. I, I know more what I want. So I'm in this uh, transition of uh, of finding uh, the the right uh, place. So I'll say that will be the next uh, for me. Oh, that's exciting! We're all excited to hear about that. That'll be great. <laughs> We'll Thank be, you. wait eagerly for your announcement. You got to let us know so I can pass it on to everybody. There. Well, let's let's take some questions. We have a lot. So let's take the questions. First of all, Vasali Viswa. Hi, Vasali. It's so nice to hear from you. She says, Omar, we visited your studio in uh, Oaxaca and we loved your beautiful rugs that we got from you. So there you go. And she also was, uh, and then Betty Blossmer said, hi, Omar, so great to see you on here. We met in Tehuatan del Valle, which I probably pronounced very badly. And your dad is making me a rug. I look forward to seeing you at Warp. Um, and Betsy also said your gallery is gorgeous, your studio. Um, hey, Sue, Sue Sari. Hi, Omar, I'm looking at one of the most beautiful rugs that your dad created and one that I wove myself at your family studio. Oh, I want to ask you about that. Studying with your family was a highlight in my life. Thank you and your family for sharing your passion. So you teach down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, uh, uh, with my dad, we do have this, uh, uh, this weaving experience, this uh, program, weaving program of uh, four days. So we go through very basic techniques, making lines, making triangles, making rectangles. Uh, and it's uh, a four day, uh, five hours uh, wow. uh, daily. So it's a very, uh, like I was mentioned, you, it's important to that people will understand better the craft. That's the main goal of uh, this program. The people that are interested in this craft uh, can have a better understanding of uh, of the rock making. All right, sign me up. I'm ready to go. So, if people want <laughs> okay. to find out about this, is is it at the on the uh, website? You can find uh, you can the find Faye that Lola? In the website Fay uh -huh. Lola. Uh, we just had uh, we just had uh, we're just updating uh, some sections of our website, but uh, yeah. You can, uh, you can either send us an email, you can either send us, if you're on Instagram, send a, a, a DM, and we will get all the information through, through these platforms. Oh, wow. Now I'm ready. Okay. Um, Elizabeth 
Nisley wants to know, Omar, when you weave a rug featuring curved corners, does it radically change your own feeling about the rug? Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, uh, by tradition and by history, rugs are meant to be for floor. So something I, I really want to, to, to do and to offer is this new uh, proposal of a rug can be seen as a wall hanging piece. Yeah. So how I can make this happen? So I start with a curved, uh, um, curved uh, edges and yeah, it totally changes. You know, something I like to say and is that I'm using traditional tools. I'm using, using a traditional process, but then what I'm able to do and capable to do it's uh, and presented in a more contemporary way. So just making this balance of traditional with contemporary, it's something I, I enjoy. Well, somebody was asking where you sell your work. Um, obviously you sell it at the, um, your um, store. Do you sell them, um, do you guys sell online? Like if I go online, could I buy one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Usually, mainly will be in in our store in Oaxaca or uh -huh. in our workshop. Uh, we do have a, a online shop, and that's where you can uh, you can get some of our work as well. Uh, like I was mentioned, I'm in this process of uh, updating it. So yeah, that will be the the ways. The same, you can send either an email or DM through Instagram, and we will get all the information. Well, Karen LeBlanc wants to know that, um, are there other people that inspire you other than Joseph Albers? Are there other artists that you follow or um, that are rug weavers or tapestry weavers? Uh, you know, I, obviously I, I really enjoy uh, to see the work of Annie Albers. It's a big inspiration as a, as a weaver. Uh, I do really like uh, Paul Klee. Uh, he's very, he's aesthetic. I'm uh, very into Mondrian as well. I really enjoy uh, just the uh, how organized and how structured is their work. So that's something I really uh, uh, like to, 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 to do. And all the time as well, I like to go here in my city. I like to go to museums. Uh, I like to travel and do the same, uh, see to museums. I have these, uh, these uh, I enjoy seeing the work of painters, so yeah. I can see Paul Klee in your work. I, was, <laughs> I thought of that when I saw you, especially that one behind you. Um, and do you give, you give tours? If people come uh, down here? Somebody was asking if, if we give tours. Yeah, you know, the way to, uh, how we work is uh, through appointments only in order okay. to visit. So the way to book a, or to schedule a visit will be same way, email or either uh, Instagram in order to book your visit. Mm -hmm. Oh, Karen wants to know, what is your favorite piece that you made? Or do you uh, remember the first thing that you made? Uh, that's that's uh, hard because all of them, I, I, I love them. They... Uh, they they take they they are they are a part of me so it to be will be very unfair for me to to have a, a favorite but if i will have to choose i will say the very first one i wove uh because with that i i start um this uh this journey but yeah it will be very it's hard it's hard to, to pick it's like one. your children which child do you like best right <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, exactly. did you did you start off like with a regular size loom or was your piece, first piece like a small, you know, training kind of piece? <laughs> yeah, so I was, um, at first I had like this kind of frame loom, which was, oh, okay. which if you put upside a, a chair, you will have like this frame. Uh, so my dad uh, uh, did a... Uh, 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 warped me the, the the chair and that was my first loom 
Then when I was eight, eight years old, uh, my dad gave me my first, very first loom, a pedal loom. So since then, I've been working on a pedal loom. Yeah. Now, is your loom, somebody's asking this, is your loom um, two harness, four harness? Uh, the yes. one I'm using, the one I'm using is two harness and I have 16 threads per inch. So we could say it's a, it's a, uh, not the finest, but it's, it start to be a fine uh, uh, weaving. Well, Pam Kicklighter and Pam, I think your suggestion is brilliant. Thinks you should come to our conference called Convergence and come teach. So we want you to come and teach at Convergence. You've already got I, people I, I lined up. That. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you normally just weave with wool? Uh, no, I've been experimenting with Ixle, which is this fiber that comes uh, from the agave, the agave plant. So oh. it will, we will call it like the leftover of the, uh, of the agave. Uh, sadly, it's an almost uh, lost practice to make the spinning of this fiber wow. since there's not a lot of people, uh, more people doing it. Uh, but yeah, I've been experimenting with Ixle. I've been experimenting uh, with, uh, I'm enjoying working with uh, Monker, Alpaca uh, right now. Uh, uh, I've been doing thicker, uh, fiber, so in order to have a different texture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I've been experimenting with uh, uh, fiber, uh, natural fibers. Um, Marilyn Warner wants to know, do you sell your um, weft, your wool at the shop? Oh, uh, yeah, in, okay. in the shop, we don't have it like physically, but we do have uh, images. So if you're in the shop, you can mm -hmm. point the ones you like and it, you can you can have them, yeah. <laughs> now, everybody's asking about your dyeing techniques. First of all, um, do you use gladiolus, gladiolus as dyeing? Can you use dyeing? Do they use for dyeing, gladiolus? Uh, I, I, you know, I uh, probably, I, I, I don't know the, the, the word, probably I know it in Spanish. I haven't heard it oh. in English, yeah. All right, but so uh, well, my, what that is. well, my sources will text. be, yeah, well, mainly my sources will be uh, indigo, cochineal, marigold, uh, pomegranate, sapote, and yeah, I'm able to get hundreds of different hues only from these five sources. Wonderful. Um... Now people want to know how, what do you do use to set your dyes? Oh, so, well, since it's a, since it's a, the fiber I'm using, it's a protein fiber. So I need to, uh, to use uh, different mordants. So the one I will be using the most will be alum. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. There you go, Michaela. Sorry, it's alum. Uh, <laughs> Oh, somebody wants to know how long is the agave fiber? What's the length oh, of it? Oh, the length. Oh, well, that, that depends. You know, it's, uh, it could be either 10 feet. It could be either uh, less than that. I think 10 will be like the max. Wow, we're getting a tour. Look at <laughs> this. Yeah. Wow, isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, this is uh, uh, my family's. Uh, where we were hanging our, our rugs. Now, I didn't, I, I forgot to finish the story. That rug that was behind you, you said you just took it off the loom, right? Uh, yeah, like uh, two days ago. Two days ago. Yeah, like two days ago. All right. Um, people want to know if, um, Oh, somebody want to know what was the last dye you mentioned? I don't remember what. Ah, uh, sapote. Probably it was sapote. That's a native fruit from uh, my region. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Big okay. And somebody wants to know if you'll talk a little more about the symbolism. Basali wants to know that. Would you talk more about your symbolism that you use? Yeah. Well, you know, 
obviously I get inspiration of, uh, and I don't want to lose this essence of uh, traditional, to be more specific, uh, Zapotec motifs. Uh, so uh, mainly all the motifs that are that will be shown in in, in the patterns of, of the rugs will be from these archaeological sites, either from Mitla, Montalban, uh, and these other archaeological sites. Uh, my my symbolisms and my uh, patterns will be this uh, also this like deconstruction of them. So something I really enjoyed to do is uh, there's this Stepet Greca, which is a very traditional uh, pattern uh, that you can find in, in Mitla specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, what I like to do is just grab a, a section of those, uh, uh, of those steps and make it bigger, um, make it them smaller. So uh, I just like to to rotate them as well. So I do a lot of that experimentation to rotate uh, patterns. Um, hey, wants to know, what do you do to finish your rugs after you take them off the loom? You talk some about doing the fringes. Uh, what else has to be done to them? Yeah, well, me, I like it when I'm, when it's out of the loom, I like to, uh, to, uh, to put the rug on the floor uh, for one day in order to, uh, since I'm applying tension when I'm weaving, mm -hmm. I do this uh, in order, usually rug will have a, will reduce the size. So that's, I like to do that to, to wait uh, for one entire day. And then uh, to clean it, I like to steam it, uh, steam my, my rugs as well, not from very close. I like to do it from a little bit far. And yeah, the ending, which will be uh, one of the most uh, hardworking activities when ending a rug uh, comes, yeah. It's always the details at the end that kind of gets us all. Well, I am so excited that you were on here, Omar. You have your whole cheering section here today. Everybody is, the chats are all talking about going down there and meeting you and your family. And uh, just a reminder, somebody else asked about that. If you're interested in going down and seeing Omar, take a class, go to his website and we're gonna, it's in the chat and then we're gonna talk about it here in a second. But thank you so much for being on here today. This has been so much fun, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, I feel very, uh, very honored, very happy. And yeah, to all the people, uh, if you're interested in textiles, uh, feel free to, to visit. Uh, you're, uh, you'll be always welcome. Great, great. And we're going to figure out how to get you up here. We need to do that. All right. If you're interested, feilola.com. Go, go there first. Um, and you're going to see some information. If you don't see what you want, he also said, go to his Instagram and then you can message him through that way. And he will get you the information about coming down and whether you want a tour or a class or you just want to go to their shop. Um, and there are things in the chat also about other tours that include uh, Omar's um, business. So check into that if you're interested in going down there. Um, but there's a lot of information about his work and, and other things too. Uh, we do wanna thank um, Weave a Real Peace for sponsoring today. They do incredible things to support artists as you know the scholarship that Omar had. Um, check them out if you want more information. There are organizations here in the United States. Somebody was asking if it was in uh, Oaxaca. It is not, it's here in the United States. Um, somebody has put in chat more information about the organization. And we thank them. They have been a very good supporter of all the programs here. Um, if you are interested in um, being a sponsor for Textiles and Tea, whether it's your guild or your business or you, if you want to honor someone, please go to our website at weavespendie.org and you can learn more about being a sponsor. We have another jurors talk coming up. This one will be about the basketry, dogwood to kudzu. It was, again, all the entries from Convergence this past summer. We're going to have a juror, Judy Zugish, will be talking about 
um, the insight and the imagery and why she chose what she did and her, her thoughts on the artist and their piece. So if you are interested, it's this Thursday at two, um, on February 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern time. If you are interested, you can sign up online, weavespindie.org. HGA members will get a discount, but it is open to anyone who would like to watch. Um, this will be our last one. We did all of our juried shows. When you sign up, you can watch it later also if you don't get a chance to watch it right then and there. Um, and you can see anything later through Tam Weaver's Guild. If you want to watch another episode of Textiles and Tea, if you would like to watch this one again, if you want to share it with a friend, it is on HGA Facebook. You can watch it there. It will also be on YouTube. And I encourage you to sign up uh, and be a, um, get a, your sign up with YouTube and then you can watch it uh, and they'll let you know when a new one has been uploaded. Thank you all so much for being here today. Again, just a reminder, a uh, big thank you to everybody who has supported HGA over the last few months, over the last couple of years. Convergence about, I mean, COVID just about did us all in. And our members have been wonderful. You've rallied, you've really helped HGA survive and blossom in a lot of ways. I think we've all talked about how lemons got turned into lemonade. Textiles and tea is a great example of that. You know, we just thought we would do this during COVID and we'd be done, but it's just been so much fun. We've kept going. So thank you so much for your support. Um, you can continue to support HGA either by donating to the Fiber Trust, uh, becoming a member or both, but we do appreciate everyone's generous support. Uh, next week, we have Jane Stafford. If you're not familiar with her, she has a wonderful online school. You can learn tons and I can't wait to hear about her weaving history. So y'all have a great week. A big thank you again to Omar. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Happy tea.